Hey everybody, how y'all doing? Well, we're getting uh, started and finding out. It looks like this motor must have been a replacement motor because there's silicone and spots that don't need to be. Uh, the truck this came out of should have had this motor in it. It was a four bolt. It's a three. 54 bolt late model one piece and it's going to become a special motor now that I show you guys a little bit of what I do to get this clean we need to make sure this deck is straight and I'm using a lot of two and a half or so scotch bright on a smaller thing but uh, when you're doing this you don't sit there in one spot because you'll mess the deck it's just like grinding any metal and this is not grinding this is just scotch brighten but it'll, if you stay in one spot too long, it'll do the same thing, but you just got to move. You're just wanting to get the dirt off. That's one of those things I want to have to invest in is a polar. And I don't care. You can put vice grips or whatever on there. I need a dowel pin polar. That, those little things just are going to come out. You don't want to remove metal, but and where the head gasket don't go, you want to make sure you get that rust off too. Uh, just in case the gasket fits a little different. And... Now this is a replacement motor, because there is nothing up there. Well, I'm here, I'll clean up the other. I realize the gasket's still on that one. about you guys but I'm watching a little better than NASCAR and listening to a crazy cat being stubborn so no smell the way to see this okay alright all right, we got that take off any silicone that's up there so ah, hopefully this block is straight and there's my two one and a half and twos I'm going to check for there you go crisscross One and a half won't go either, so. 
That side's good. That side's good. Oh, I'm here. Going around the box. I want to. Again, just keep moving. Ha! Ah. And this is not that big so fast what we're doing on that. Guess what I just found? I just found a flaw in the block. <laughs> it doesn't say Mexico on it, so I don't know. Show you here. Okay, got that one. Right there is some casting hole in it. I've done that side, so that's done. So yeah, I can. Yeah, I stick the tip of the blade in it, but it's just, ha, ah. and it does not say made in Mexico, so I don't know, alrighty, been something. You gotta make sure your stuff's clean. Okay. Let's see why. When I went this way, the first time I checked it. It does. When I go that way, uh oh, 2000s go under. I'll put the two of them together, see, that'd be 3000s. Three and a half out. But it's only right here in this corner. last block, the last block was bad. So this one should work. This one should be good for what we're doing. So this one goes up, gets board 40 over now with the pistons because I used to do board blocks and then worry about the pistons later. But when I'm finding out with these new style pistons, you can't you shouldn't really do that. I gotta get the oil galley plugs out of this. Uh, so, 
Now it's just finished quick, uh, getting all the galley plugs out and that's of the machine shop. But uh, I gotta get this stud out here. Actually, I can put to a smaller wheel and clean that one up. So that one passes that. And this one's just freshly taken apart so I don't have to chase the threads. There ain't, they haven't rusted or nothing, so. Square drive, okay. Yep, for being a replacement motor, this one, I don't know what they did, but it's got bad ring ridge here. So, going forward, it should clean it. Um, yeah, it's just... I either I knock out the soft plugs or I let them knock out the soft plugs. I guess the, it's costing me the same, so I guess it really don't make a difference. But right now, that means... I got some stuff in my way, now I can set it with this block and know where it's going. So, which actually this block here, uh, this block here needs to, I can figure that out off camera. Well, I've been uh, cleaning blocks and that, I find the one with the worst. Ring ridge, and we're gonna Let's see how bad it is. It's all about feel. Ah. Lost it. Not tight enough. Seventeen, eighteen, point, eighteen, four point eight, one eight, nine. It's eighteen thousandths over four, four inch. So yeah, the forty will, the forty will clean that. Then I've been over here. Oops, I've been over here, and you guys be like, oh, Mama Bear would have fun with that one. Yeah, I told her, and she kind of, I didn't have it on record, or camera on. But I've been measuring crankshafts. This is a standard crank, and it's just on the bottom side, and it's going to go into a race car. I uh, got to take and have it polished to see if it stays. He had a 10 10 crank, and that 10 10 crank uh, since it's 10 10, it should measure 
and it's measuring 2.4353 on the mains. Uh, they're all under what they're supposed to be. The rods should measure 2.899 to 2.09 for 10 under. And number one on that crank measured 2.887 and then 2.8. Oops, I didn't write that down. That's the case that number one's out around. I wrote down two. No. Ah, dang it. I hate that one. I can't, don't understand my own writing. 2.7. That makes. Yeah, my, that one out. But the rest of them, and the rear main on that one too, showed a little bit out around. But the rods were right on 2.885. But that's. Well, over four, over th four thousandths smaller than what it's supposed to be. So that crank needs to be turned. That one needs turned. This one, hopefully, will polish. Um, there's not a good way of storing this stuff in an unheated building, and that's what's the problem is the unheated building, thanks to the rust. So, I got one more crank. Well, heck, let's get her up here. Come on, just check it quick. Because I know that crank had half, half thou under bearings under it, in it. I'm just kind of curious to see. No. Oh. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, we'll check the main saw. Again, it's all in your fill, so uh, twenty-five. 45, 46, 47. And the standard main should be 247.8. And we are at 247.0. So. <laughs> that would be the half half thou, but it's going to need polished. So, I know, take crosshairs when you measure your stuff, but I'm just doing a quick check. 45, 46, 47, 48. What did I say out of the first one? I might have read there. Uh, 48. 48. On the veneer scale. 1. So, yeah, I mean, it's doing. It's, that one's a little. Seven, forty-eight, two. So yeah, it's. And again, you check your own measurements. I'm just going by. So that's two forty-eight, uh, forty-six, forty-seven. Uh oh, that one's small. Try that again. That one's get in there to the lock. Forty six, forty seven. Yeah, that one's forty seven. 
47 and the veneer scale is not lining up with anything oh there it is 247.7 so that's and that oh well, that's still within I mean it by the time it's polished it'd be a one under bearing 46, 47. Eight. Which the rear mains usually a little smaller. So that okay. We'll just take a quick check on the rods. I mean this is just this is just what this is right now is just help me verify that my micrometer is set, my mindset's right on. It's supposed to be 200. Ninety two one hundred is what it's supposed to be. Seventy five plus ninety five, ninety six, ninety seven, ninety eight, ninety eight, five. That's a thou under. Well, half thou under. Okay, yeah, half thou, yeah, that goes, I think, if my math. Yeah, that's a I hate that when the veneer scale don't line up with anything. Oh, there it is. Five. Two and a half thou. So, yeah, it, it was. I know this had half thou bearings on it. So, like I said, to get the scratches out in that, it'll be easily a one thousandths under bearing. Um, so, that's good to know. So, yeah, I'm my, okay, so that means I've been measuring the stuff correctly. You know, always, I mean, even a piece of lint would be enough to mess that up. So, okay. Uh, let's see, which one? Let's turn up here. I'll have somebody else verify my measurements, but uh, yeah, that's where we're at. So, and I know the block will go 40. I know the crank, well, the crank is already done. And speak of the devil. Alrighty. Yep, that was one of the guys, and just trying to figure out that what we're going to do and use and everything, so. I don't know why. It just uh, well, I know why. It's after seeing how dirty that motor was when it was cut, it was a victim of uh, no maintenance. You could tell that in the motor. So I kind of made his day because he, it's like, okay, now we got this and this, and uh, I'm like, yep. So oh, that's all we can do. Is I'm going to take the two cranks up. Oh, I got other cranks I got to take up too for other stuff. And uh, the one I'm not sure if it's going to clean. The one I hope is clean. Uh, 
just have to see. So, lots of stuff going through the head here. I mean, there's a, a lot of numbers bouncing around in the head and a lot of things. And, uh, and it's cool in here today. And that's the sad thing, too. Temperatures could change the sizes of everything. And it just all takes time. Uh, I got to stop thinking for a second because I got, I'm starting to, I got, I got to take care of a bunch of things tomorrow. And I, I'm not like my oldest where you just, Oh, gotta go to town and get this. Oh, gotta go to town and get this. I try planning my trips to get the most out of the trip to go. And uh, what I'm thinking I gotta take with me tomorrow is the cranks I need checked out and that. See if they can get polished. And then I gotta take. Don't ask me where this is coming from. It's just. Oh. Uh. Then I got a set of rods and pistons I got to take along. So that assembly can be balanced. Um, yeah. And all at the end of the day, got to make sure it makes some money. Because uh, right now I am in the talks and... Uh, that I might have found a good chunk of what I need so I can actually hone my own stuff and do the heads and I don't know what else he's all got but uh, so I've been kinda that's been in the back of my mind how to come up with the money to go get this stuff and then it, it, it either be a 20 hour drive well it's either gonna be a 20 hour drive or a 40 hour drive <laughs> Uh, the 20 hour drive will be, he meets me halfway. Then we, then we just turn our switch hook up and go. Uh, the 40 hour drive is I go all the way to his place, pick up the stuff, and then head home. Which be cool because Mama Bear's never seen the ocean. So, yeah, could be a road trip coming up. Or then I've thought about just if I can get it done and swung. Flying out, renting the truck, and uh, bringing everything back. Is for me to make a trip like that, I'd need new tires for my truck, and um, I don't know. So we're getting closer to being a self-sustained shop and uh, be able to get this stuff done. And one of the guys I'm working with, he's had some bad experience with shops where. He thought stuff was being done for X amount of dollars, and when he goes to pick it up, it was this amount of dollars, and I told him, no, I don't do that. I mean, I know you can't be nice all the time, but the barter system and the trade out and that helps too. I mean, he's got a few things that I'd like to end up with, and then I can do more. I mean, it's just like life every day. Every day is a gamble. You, everything, I mean, everything you do, you got to plan, plan ahead or, yeah, it's, it's just a vicious cycle. <sighs> so, actually, I was kind of interested in this crank, but this isn't as nice as the one I got over there, which has still got a nice polish to it. And I mean, I should measure that one quick while I got this stuff out. You know what? Let's do that. I'll measure one more together. What the heck? Ouch! Come on, get out of my way. Oh, jeepers! I can tell you, I keep tossing this cast iron around. I might get back to the way I used to be. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, mine actually looks better than that one, I guess. I thought, what's the other way? 
ground, so let's see. Like I said, this is just quick reference, nothing. This has been tore apart so long. Actually, I think a machine shop gave me the wrong crank back because we went rounds with another machine shop. 95, 98, 98, 98, 3, and rods should be 299 to 2100. So it's a little uh, one under bearing again. I mean, I know. Let's check another one. All right. And this crank is cold, so that could be a. I mean, it's cold. Ninety-six, ninety-seven, ninety-eight, ninety-eight, seven. So yeah. Yeah. Still standard then, so and you always use the ratcheting then out here. If you turn right there, you could <coughs> crank your mic out of whack, so. 50, almost 50, 25, 55, 56, 57, 58, 5, huh. what did I say? 2, 20, oh, I said 58, didn't it? 47, jeepers, 48, 5, hey, that is good yet, that's within spec, so, ah, a nice light polish on this one, and it'll be ready to go, cool, cool. And granted, you got to verify your own measurements. I'm using my old book here. Oh, this old. It's been my book for many, many years. Yeah, I mean, I think this is one of the first manuals I got. And then, you know, for years I couldn't find my long feeler gauges. Open up the book one day and I'm like, oh, there they are. I left them in the book so they wouldn't get destroyed. As before I had micrometers and that, that's, and my father in law taught me. That's I had certain feeler gauges. I'd put the pistons in, and if I could draw the feeler gauge out, then it was right. So, but now things have kind of changed, and so this crank needs to go up and be polished, because I got the late model block over there. That's standard, standard or ones, which I've got some bearings. So that means I got a late model block with flat top pistons. That'll be running here pretty quick. Cool. And the phone ding, didn't it? Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, this is... I've been out here... Well, what time is it? It is... Four... Really? I've been out here that long. 11, 11.30 I got out here. It's 5 o'clock. And uh, I, all I've done is cleaned and checked the deck on the block, cleaned up the other one, deck surfaces, check that. And I've just measured up one, two, three, four, five, five crankshafts. So, yeah. Um, 
and here it is. So six hours of messing with this. It doesn't seem like it takes that long. And uh, it takes time. <laughs> I mean, granted, I mean, everything we've done back and forth already, I mean, it's kind of racked up a bill, but the stuff I'm interested in from him, is it's kind of already washed itself out. So I need to get some of this stuff together to get sold to get continuing on and yeah, it's just a very vicious cycle. And I get my hands on this stuff from this other guy. I'm already kind of thinking of a layout in here uh, for temporary and once I get that equipment from him then it's going to be on the buying concrete and lumber when the temperature gets warm and the frost is out of the ground. So we can add on. So, anyway, that's where we're at right now. Um, I got to go now, finish figuring out. I got to take a piece of paper now and I got to sit down and make a list of what I got to go do tomorrow, what's got to be paid, what's got to be hauled in, what's got to be ordered, and get parts coming. And there are some parts I could pick up locally, but I'm going to call them to make sure they got them and they didn't raise the prices on those too. So, Yeah, this is where I kind of need an assistant. Uh, well, okay, I figured out I can get this here, here, here. Here's the money. Go pick this stuff up for me so I can stay here in the shop. So, I guess. And I keep getting inquiries on that last 350 I built, but nobody comes through. I mean, it's a brand new motor from top to bottom. Cranks turned. Garage recon, piston, new pistons, this is fresh bore, new cam lifters, timing chain gear, oil pump, the heads, intake, I mean, and uh, I don't know. So, I guess if I don't sell it, I'll get it back, get it back home along with the other one, and we'll have some motors to go racing with or something. Um, seriously thinking about putting a drag car or something together to go have fun. And it takes time. Got to keep uh, got to keep God in your life and Jesus and it makes a difference. I'm finding that out. So. I guess with that, everybody, yeah, stay tuned because here pretty soon the parts are going to start going and we're going to have fun. See y'all later. Have a good one.